<laughs> Hi, Rohit. Thanks for joining in. Welcome to the One Minute CM uh, show, talk show. And uh, thanks for taking time out for this. Uh, friends, we have a new friend here who is an actor, who is a director. He's a singer. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, he composes music. He writes his own songs. Uh, he's a biker. He's a rider. Uh, he also cooks. And, you know, there are a lot of other stuff he's mentioned, <laughs> which he had to do during the uh, lockdown. Uh, yeah. More importantly, he's an artist. And uh, he believes that he's a... Uh, Houdini. Uh, Houdini is a person who can vanish, you know, from scene without, uh, you know, you coming to know about it. So that wrote it, and uh, he has also acted uh, the upcoming pe uh, film called Ugly. Uh, so the trailer is out on YouTube. But let's let's hear more about uh, Rohit in person. So Rohit, can you just introduce yourself? Oh, absolutely. Um... Hi, everybody. Hope you're having a great Monday morning. Um, to tell you a little bit about me, I grew up in Hyderabad. Uh, and uh, I think I started becoming extremely active since the age of three. I think I had a small red tricycle, which I'd ride all over the house. So I think that's my interest in motorcycles. It started from there. And uh, consequently, I got a lot into cricket. I really wanted to play for India like every other small schoolboy. Uh, but then, you know, Padai, Vadai, 10th class, board exams during that age. Now I'm talking about the 90s here, not the 2000s, the 90s, right? Where you had to get into banking, engineering, medicine, or, you know, a decent job, right? So I finished that and I quit cricket. I had to quit cricket, uh, went to boarding school. Uh, grew up, I think, there because uh, I got bullied on, beaten up, you know, in the real life, mm -hmm. you know, essentially. And uh, so that was a very different experience shifting from a school like Hyderabad Public School, Begumpe, to a complete boarding school in a flash. Uh, so that made a difference to my life. And then I did my graduation in Delhi. Okay. And uh, that's when I think I really started learning more about life. You know, uh, how things are outside, how different people from different worlds come together and how you have to survive. You know, then you realize your 10th class marks, your 12th class marks don't really give a crap. <laughs> you know, like when you have one big six foot four Haryani jug coming over, you're bad, I'm going to kill you. What do you do? Right? Then you're like, yeah, 99 will have me in maths. Leave me. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so I finished graduation there, um, had a ball of a time, came back to Hyderabad and started working in uh, HSBC. Mm -hmm. so I worked there for about five years in corporate communications. Uh, I worked as a trainer. I worked in operations as well. Uh, finally, I let go of HSBC and then I joined a couple more companies, ADP being my last one. Mm -hmm. And uh, one day I got up and I quit. I quit corporate. Literally, I went back home from, uh, I remember Necklace Road. I'd gone to this corporate party and it was a great party. And I'm the types to sort of uh, tell people, you know, give me a call when you're back home safe. You know, I'll wait for their message. And I realized when I went to this place and I stopped, I think, to just get a breath of fresh air, I passed out, believe it or not. I passed out at Necklace Road oh. and I didn't have a message or a call on my phone asking whether I was safe. And that's when I realized there was something wrong with my life because I had everything. I had money, I had friends, I had parties, I had guitars, I had everything I'd ever wanted. But if I'm not home by that time and I'm getting up somewhere passed out, it's not a good sign that you're going in the right direction, right? So I called up my boss and I said, boss, I quit. I said, I don't want my pay. <laughs> I don't want anything. I just can't come to work from today. And nine years later, well, here I am in front of you, or 10 years later. So that's when I started acting and I went to uh, Annapurna Studios. I studied acting, I studied direction, uh, and uh, then I fell in love. And it's been a love-hate relationship so far, but uh, they're part of the same coin, <laughs> so to speak. So that's a little about me. Um, I, I rode a lot of motorcycles in between uh, mm -hmm. for about three, four years, had a lot of accidents, met a lot of great people. And uh, uh, that taught me a lot as well. 
you know, tra- riding alone, riding with people, traveling to a lot of different places and uh, seeing it from different eyes, I guess. You know, when you have a bunch of bikers, everybody views the road differently. Everybody views your chai stop differently, you know, or have different stories to tell. And uh, we went on this journey called the Yamaha India Bike Rally, I think around 2009 or 2010, I'm not sure. And we had to cover about 42 cities in 21 days. So that was about, you know, 8,000 or 9,000 kilometers. I might get the figure wrong. But uh, about 30 of us having to do that over 21 days was pretty exciting. And uh, I think after that, it was really difficult to get back to normal life, (laughs) you know. To get a slice of the things out there, freedom, freedom. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, well, now I am uh, an artist more than anything, and uh, thank you for having me today. And uh, yeah, so I'm here. Let's get the ball rolling. Let's pick up the pace, I guess. Super. So, uh, one of the things which I envy is the hairstyle, uh, Rohit. So, that's <laughs> that's uh, pretty something which I envy apart from your biking and traveling. So, being an artist, I, I think you, you've come to a stage where you found yourself, you, you know what you like in life and you know, you're know you not in the rat race. And that's one of the things which we are looking at this particular show where we have people who have a lot of passion. Uh, for what they want to do and they, they're ready to you know move out of uh, other stuff which can hold back uh, doing these things so good good job so are you all set ready for the rapid fire question I'm, I'm set okay so describe yourself in two words love mm-hmm. and nobody okay and if you have to compare yourself with uh, a cartoon uh, who would that be? Jerry. Jerry? Okay. Yeah, or Hobbes, maybe from Calvin and Hobbes, maybe Hobbes. <laughs> yeah. So, what did you do after you got passed out uh, Nicholas Road, after you realized that nobody's called you? So, what, you know, apart from quitting the job, where did you go after that? I actually spent about uh, close to about eight to nine months at home. Mm-hmm. I hardly stepped out and I really had to take control of my life. I had to get over uh, addictions that were building, you know, and that's an important part of being an artist. You go through various phases, right? And I was going through a bad alcoholic phase where uh, I couldn't go a day without drinking a certain amount of alcohol. Um, So that was my first task to sort of understand what had happened to me, Mm -hmm. why I was feeling the way I was. And making peace with it, you know. Uh, so I think that took me about a year, year and a half to just be all right again, to be okay with being me, you know. Um, so yeah. So immediately after I told my boss I quit, I uh, cut off a lot of people, um, or rather, people cut off from me. I think, <laughs> you know. I think I made some mistakes as well, and uh, I had to find some forgiveness. I had to understand a little more of the world, and that's what I did. And immediately I I went and I told my mom saying, uh, I want to do acting. I really want to act. Not because I wanted to become famous, but Mm -hmm. because I think it's a brilliant platform to be able to say a lot, you know, Um, not just influences audience, not just influence audiences, but make them think, you know, make them think about different points of view, the way different people are living in the world. We're all characters in our own way. And I don't think anybody is boring, you know. So using cinema or theater or music or dance to show a different point of view, to be able to exhibit yourself a little bit, it's always a nice thing to do. And it's challenging because one day you're a doctor. I could never study to be a doctor. One day I'm a lawyer. One day I'm a police officer, you know. It was uh, nice that way. And um, yeah, and then I started on that and uh, pretty much continued uh, with them. So, uh, you know, you you have these friends. I mean, this is a very common thing, you know, uh, at workplace or at college. You have a group of friends who hang out together and uh, there is always one or two people who are always entertaining. You know, they're, they're humorous. They're always, uh, they entertain others. You know, uh, 
having their presence always feels good uh, because they take care of entertaining us and you know whether it is a cup of tea or you know a smoke or hanging out for uh, a quick meal uh, makes a lot of difference and did you have any of those or were you one of those uh, people who were friends who were always entertaining did that trigger that signal saying that yes i can act and i can uh, you know take this as my career that's a that's a lovely question actually um i think i was um i was blessed to have friend circles where everybody was unique mm-hmm. so everybody sort of uh made everybody laugh or cry and i think that's what was fascinating for me because that's when i realized how different people view things so differently now whether i was uh an entertainer i don't know but i think i was always the types to get people to do stuff you know so if i had an idea saying hey let's write a story i'd give a line and then i'd say okay you add a line you add a line let's put it together so i think i would be the fulcrum mm-hmm. maybe not the sides of the seesaw but the you know that small little bolt and nut that screws everybody together sort of that way uh so i think they helped me they helped me um want to be an artist more than anything because i realize like one of my closest friends is an accountant mm-hmm. and he's brilliant and that's an art right not everybody can be a great accountant right and i realized man but one day i'd love to play an accountant i'd love to understand what goes into bringing that out you know so i think more than anything i use them to fuel my fire than the other way around you know and i hope they used me to fuel their fire as well so i i think that's the thing you leave me alone mm-hmm. i'll find a being as entertaining as i would find a human being oh. name so, couple of your friends who whom you wouldn't mind hanging out any time hanging out any time uh ashrita johnson she's staying in birmingham alabama right now uh she's a brilliant keyboardist a piano player a guitar player and has a very nice view on life so she's one um the other friend not family again just friends would be uh shreya gupta Uh, we've been friends since first grade oh, wow. uh, yeah and shilpa when i met in hsbc mm-hmm. uh bhavna nair they're all women so i mean go figure uh, but they're all abroad they're all doing their thing uh, another couple of friends maybe would be harish mm-hmm. uh, alok puri very smart individuals very hard working focused guys when it comes to artists again that's a whole different segment Yeah. but i think um my friend my mentor who i love hanging out with the most because i can speak to her about anything literally anything is uh, my mentor probably mala pasha okay uh she's the one who took me in and you know healed my wings so to speak in a lot of ways so any day of the week i'd love to sit with her over a bottle of wine or rum and coke <laughs> and discuss everything yeah name yeah. one friend who is like really down to earth no strings attached no lies no uh, fancy stuff hmm i really don't know um again down to earth uh, i would say there's this bundy guy and i'm telling you i i draw a lot of inspiration from this dude right He's a small guy, maybe about five feet four inches. You know, short mustache, Telangana, and he makes the onion and uh, mirchi bajis. Okay. And every time I go to him, he treats me as a very special customer, and he tells me about his stories, about his wife, his three kids, how they live in this small room. But he does his work with so much enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. You know, he treats everybody with a lot of life and a lot of laughter. and uh, stuff like that so i think he's my most down to earth <laughs> friend <laughs> you know he doesn't see what all i have or uh, he looks at me in a way like i'm completely normal and i look at him in a way that we're completely normal you know so i think he's 
this guy i always look forward to i can have a bad day but i know if i'm walking down the road and i just see him he'll be like ah go it now go now you know and i think that cheers me up because there are no complications there you know there's no line which i have to be otherwise with a lot of people when you go out you have to be something there's a persona you put on right whether we like it or not you know we dress a certain way we speak a certain way but with certain people you can just be who you are so you know if that. he is on facebook he sends you a ad request would you go ahead and accept it oh absolutely i am on his instagram and facebook by the way he sent me a request when i was in the us i'm like what Yeah. Yeah, my own uh, my our own local uh, supermarket mm-hmm. sent me a request. So I'd like to think uh, that um, uh, they're my biggest friends in a certain way. They might not know a lot about me, but uh, they see me with no bias. Yeah. Yeah, it it's a, it means a lot for them uh, like you know uh, I know Rohit Anna he's this and all that. you know more than the value which we can uh, add them or uh, in they might give by you know becoming our friend it makes a lot of difference uh, you know how they treat you and they talk right. about you so i i see a lot of friends who are very selective in you know accepting the friend request they they are very particular about what he does uh, he or she does you know kya karta hai what what is the status they maintain and all that but yeah i i completely agree with you it, it is friend should be that no strings attached people who you can you're really comfortable sharing your uh, uh, posts or you know your life with them so, yeah uh, absolutely and, and i think especially it's like this when when you see an injured animal on the road what do you do you don't ask where it's come from you don't ask for its mother or its religion or you know the language they speak but you take care of it right you greet it with a certain compassion and you do that so i think when you meet these people who don't know your insights mm-hmm. but who treat you with a unbiasedness it's nice you know because you don't have to keep checking on yourself and the rest of the uh what do you call it? the rest of the the icing on the cake disappears no matter how great your icing is if the cake isn't well done inside if it's not made with love if it's not made with the right ingredients it's not going to taste right sure. so finally the cake is meant to be eaten it's not meant to be looked at you know so uh, i think that's what these guys teach me but yeah um yeah sharing your insides out without having saying a word it's not easy to do you know uh, so yeah Let, let's go to your school now so what is the weirdest thing for which you were punished in your school days not college your school days well uh, two things stand out actually uh, one was uh, i think it was 10th class i was studying in hps begumpet mm-hmm. and i was really tiny as a kid i think i was 4 feet 5 inches or 4 feet 6 mm-hmm. and i used to play cricket right so i was pretty good at it and uh, a lot of my seniors bun school because we had to watch sachin playing at hca and we had to get out of the school day yeah and they weren't sure how to take me out so they packed me in a school kit bag and took me out the gate i don't know how they managed to do that but they did it anyway and i finally got caught because i left my school bag in school and i wasn't there <laughs> yeah that was a bondu uh, so that was one thing and um, when i was in hostel we used to live about i think 10 kilometers away from the dhabas mm-hmm. and our food wasn't the best food so whenever we could go get dhaba food you know it would be this adventure you know you run out of the hostel you have to go through the forest and cook and this thing so the first two times i did it i never got caught but the one time where i did not run i got caught and i got suspended i think for like a week or something uh, so yeah that was one thing and uh, college uh, one of my really close friends so mm-hmm. you know the girls hostel my back was facing the girls hostel right and i was wearing a pair of boxer shorts which said i love you all over them well a girlfriend had given it to me so i was wearing them. and i don't think i was wearing a belt that day so one of my friends jokingly pulled my pants 
and my pants fell down to my ankles okay yeah so i was facing the whole of the girls hostel wearing red and black i love you boxers so so i just lifted my pants up and i'm like hey yeah, you know relax everybody clapped <laughs> so like what did the great prank you played uh, with your friends i'm the last one to play pranks mm-hmm. uh, but i think the last true prank i remember i think was with my cousin kunisha mm-hmm. i wore this really horrendous mask you know one of those horrendous halloween masks halloween. yeah so she was doing something and i came down the stairs and if she was like this so i came behind her and i was wearing the mask and she turned around and the next 3 seconds she looked at me in horror she didn't know what to do and 3 seconds later she slapped me <laughs> <laughs> you know and i was like what were you thinking for those 3 seconds man it's <laughs> like what there was no fight there was no flight so i think she thought and she like let's fight she slapped me and yeah i think that's the last prank i uh, pulled on somebody um, but i've had some really lovely pranks being pulled on me yeah please please uh, mention one of them one of the things which you it was really hard but you loved it after the while I mean, you can oh, always, after you get into I, it these 80s you can always remember them oh yeah i'll remember this one so uh, we were in new york and i'd gone to meet ashita and a couple of other friends right and new york's you know really expensive so we got a decent hotel but there were four of us and only two people were allowed to stay in it so we had to sneak in to the hotel right so we got all our stuff in four of us mm-hmm. in one hotel room and we'd gone partying throughout the night and uh, we had a great time and we'd gone back to another person's hotel not our hotel another person's hotel and since they were still partying i thought you know if i could get back to the hotel i'd have the whole bed to myself and i can you know unwind and do my things so i think i went back to the hotel at like 5:30 in the morning and at 9 o'clock i get a call saying this is from hotel security we know that uh, you have illegally been staying in the hotel so you have 45 minutes to clear out the hotel otherwise we'll have to call the police and you have to pay a 1500 or 2000 dollar fine mm-hmm. none of my friends are back from their partying adventures and there are four suitcases in the room <laughs> and how do i pack all this stuff you know and the phone wasn't working i wasn't able to get in touch with them and i'm frantic i'm like 1500 dollars oh crap you know to call your parents and be like uh look uh, need 1500 dollars to sort of pay the hotel bill you know so i was dreading that so finally i'm panicking and panicking and i try calling my friends they're not answering my sister is with me she's not answering and then at around 9 o'clock my friends come back to the hotel room and they're recording all this by the way and i'm frantic i'm like ash sure, you know the hotel security called me up you have to get our shit together you have to get out in 45 minutes or pay a 1500 dollar fine and i'm breaking down man you know uh, but there's one thing i noticed throughout the phone call the gentleman who was speaking to me kept apologizing you know okay. like i'm so sorry sir we have to keep we have to do this i'm so sorry and he sounded too polite so i had that 1% doubt and then after that my friends came and told me hey you idiot we are the ones who called <laughs> we played this prank on you and but it was you know i didn't know what to do for a second my sister would have killed them <laughs> i spit the kick with a pinch of salt and a shot of tequila but my sister would have killed them for pulling that prank on us um, is your sister uh, kunisha reddy no uh, kunisha is my cousin yeah the one who slapped I, you so is actually a right. cousin Uh, I'm in her yeah. house actually, so yeah. So she is apologizing, saying that sorry about this slap, Rohit Anna. So no, she never apologized. Yeah, she is apologizing now. She is apologizing oh, now. Is she? Oh, she? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it was funny yeah. though. Yeah, thank you, Kunisha. But uh, yeah, please, please be gentle with such Halloween pranks uh, in future. So we do have some questions coming up. Uh, I do have mm-hmm. some more five questions, but you know we have some questions. Uh, uh one from megna uh she is saying where can we watch ugly oh that's a very good question megna as soon as i find out i will let you know uh, 
as of now they're trying to put it on an online platform so i think we'll get some news on that next next month i think so as soon as that's up uh, i'll definitely post an update on it so cool so yeah the next question is from asha joseph uh, she is mm -hmm. saying where do you see yourself in next 5 years hmm to be honest asha thank you for the question um, i don't know if you asked me 5 years back where i would have been now i would not have been able to give you this answer uh but what i can tell you is uh i i think i more or less would be trying to do the same thing still being an artist mm -hmm. uh, and if you called me 5 years later to give an interview i'd still be here speaking about the same things uh, but i think 5 years from now i think i would have produced uh, hopefully a series directed some more stuff and acted in a little more stuff that viewers can view a little more uh, and make a little money at it oh i'm a little broke so make the money hopefully yeah yeah we should, we should start some crowd funding for short films so that absolutely you know, encourage, yes. uh, you know actors uh, who really want to do creative stuff and you know entertain others yeah so, we should absolutely uh, and if i'm married yeah i'm i'm very single right now so maybe the biggest thing that would happen to me in the next 5 years is probably if i end up being with someone or end up end up getting hitched but then i'll be 40 so <laughs> let's see yeah. so next question is from uh, manjula reddy garu uh, she is saying uh, rohit is a very intensive actor i would love to know how he gets into the skin of each role he plays uh, his uh, portrayal of the character fool was brilliant so can can you talk a bit about uh, the fool character which you uh, played and also oh. about uh, answering her question as to how do you get into that skin of each character Well thank you Manju for the question. Uh well uh poor of pool actually her name is pool uh and it was a transgender character that I played. So I was playing a hijra. Yeah uh, I think I saw a photograph of that. It's nice. Right. Uh, and cool. I think the way I got into it was not looking at the character or this person as a male or a female or as a hijra. I just looked at this character being another organism first just understanding what the words were who this character is once i had to start working on myself uh, i had to tap into the feminine quality that human beings possess first because the masculine thing is something i'm born with right but i had to understand from a feminine physical traits not just of the human body but for example something as simple as how does it feel to wear a bra how does it feel to have to wear that lipstick or the kajal to highlight certain features which we normally would not do so it started off with simple things like that and i worked myself in mm -hmm. you know then i started creating the difference as if somebody had treated me that way a normal man how would i feel as vis-a-vis -vis somebody treating me a particular way if i was a hijra then the differences became quite apparent now as a hijra how would i react to it because i can't change people around so much but i can control my responses to it and how i would feel towards it so i went back home mm -hmm. i cried a lot because it made a deep impact on me and uh, the play wasn't just about being a hijra it spoke about a lot of social things like rape like sexual assault like uh, your your closed ones uh, letting you go not being able to accept who you are uh, and then finding yourself again you know so going through those uh, difficult things is what i had to go back and spend a lot of time in silence with and ask a lot of questions and not i spent a whole day believe it or not i decked up I shaved my tummy I shaved my chest I wore a bra I wore a normal t-shirt and luckily I'm skinny so I put on a pair of skinny fit jeans you know I I wore normal sneakers I put on lipstick makeup uh everything and I rode my bike to places I would normally go to you know so like a bar I would normally go to you know or a coffee place I I will not mention which place 
But um, I went there and the way they treated me, even though I got off the bike, I got off from this fancy helmet. I was wearing a fancy jacket. I was speaking fluently, obviously not in my uh, man tone, but you know, like, uh, can I have a table, please? You know, I changed my voice and I was doing everything, but they didn't treat me right. They oh. didn't even serve me a glass of water properly. So that's when I realized that's it. it's not about the education you have. It's not about how much money you have. It's just being different. You know, and I think it's not anybody's fault. I think we take time to really understand when something new is in front of us or something that's different from us. So for me to be able to accept that as just a human being first was a big step. And I think that helped me in preparing for the role, you know, and not caring what people think. Yeah. You know, I think those so, modules are very bold and, you know, uh, I've uh, seen one of the characters played by Vijay Sethupadi. Uh, I think a similar role, you know, brilliantly done. And, you know, we need such roles. And, you know, what the experience, what you mentioned, where you're ready to pay for something, buy something, and, you know, they, they don't treat uh, you well and I think that's uh, something which we have to get away with so uh, nobody uh, deserves that experience of being neglected or dejected uh, absolutely absolutely so yeah that's how I prepared man I would think what if my parents kick me out of the house hmm. and immediately I understood the emotion and uh, I you know it grew from there but it's that's one thing I want to tell all the viewers as well being an artist is not so much about portraying the final result because what you're seeing is the end result of three months of haggling yourself with something or years of haggling yourself with something for the artist it's not so much the final performance but it's about getting there hmm. you know how has that journey been what has changed you what's made you grow what's made you evolve you know as a person we all grow old because that's life but do we all evolve I don't know. I think that's a harder circuit to run. Yeah. Only selected few will get to that. So, yep. Next question from Dayanta Reddy. Uh, what character you had, you know, had the most fun portraying? <laughs> uh, well, that's actually thanks to Dayanta. Uh, she introduced me to this. Uh, lovely uh, student who wanted to do something at Salar Jung Museum. And so we did a small piece on Apollo and Daphne. So Apollo is the god of poetry and dance and art, etc. So uh, I got the opportunity to play uh, Apollo at uh, Salar Jung Museum live. So we did a live theater performance there and that was super fun. I mean, it's so brilliant playing a god who's so dumb as well who's so proud and egotistical and has every facet of love and ego amongst it and who's naughty as well. So uh, even though I've done a lot of films which I've loved and a lot of plays I've loved, but this particular character is just fun. It's so fun playing God, you know, especially when you stand up there and then after that you're like, my hand is done. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, playing Apollo was fantastic. Yeah. So I think the question was, uh, can you do this, do this part of the interview? I mean, I, she wants you to enact the character uh, here. So oh, of course I could. Uh, ask me, ask me a question. I'll, I'll try definitely. So, uh, Dayanta, what, what would that be? So maybe let's move on to the next question, and then uh, you know, in the meanwhile, we'll give some time for Dayanta to type and yeah. you know, mention what what question uh, it should be. Uh, so Asha Joseph is also asking, uh, what what are your short term goals? I think he meant, he mentioned that, right? Getting married. well, my immediate short term goals is to go finish washing the dishes, okay. <laughs> uh, do some laundry maybe. But my short term goals is to finish the number of projects I've started writing, mm -hmm. and um, to also be able to connect with more like minded people and create a group where we can all sort of, for the lack of a better term, feed off each other. So if you're producing something, I might not have to act in it, but maybe I could write something for you. 
or vice versa if i am directing something and you are not doing anything i'm sure you could be part of a lovely scene so that way keeping us all connected but working not just sitting in silos and doing our own thing so i think my short term goal is to sort of figure out a way where i can help more artists or more people uh, find the artist within you know so that i think everybody is an artist and it takes a lot of work to be one uh, so you know helping them find that way so i think that's my short term goal essentially uh, yes mom i will wash the dishes <laughs> yes dad for the clothes yeah so, yeah. so be- between the questions we have a compliment from dayanta ready she says uh, pool was the first character i saw rohit anna portrayed as a actor i thought she was beautiful but he was very uh, petrified for looking uh, looking making eye contact with me in the audience <laughs> what is yeah. what is over there or, uh... yeah they'd actually come to see the show and uh, so i think she was sitting in the second or third row and she was sitting in the middle so as soon as i looked at the audience you know i could see dianta but obviously i was playing the character i was pool then so um, uh she is a lovely character i think she taught me a lot pool as a character and uh, i have to attribute that a lot to uh, mala pasha as well for mm-hmm. giving me the opportunity to be able to portray that character as well i wasn't the first choice for it so it's interesting how that uh, character uh, came to be and uh, i'm glad that uh, my cousins and uh, friends were there to watch that piece because i think it was important to sort of portray the hijra in a different way you know it, it wasn't like how people always portray them as loud or you know the clapping or the asking for money there are you know a lot of other ways hijras live so i thought that was interesting but uh, thanks dianta uh, yeah pool was beautiful yeah <laughs> so the other is got the question ready for the character you have to play now on the screen uh, apollo if could, yeah if you could find the cure for covid what would it be i would resign myself from a job i think apollo would have to resign you know i think the gods have put covid here for a reason if i could find a cure for covid i would think it would be patience Uh, the humans are doing everything possible to find a cure but i think what human beings have to exercise is patience even though the lockdown is going to come out of lockdown to a certain extent don't be in a hurry to get out it's just the first wave you know be patient and take that extra 10 seconds for uh taking the necessary precautions man you know and be aware yeah so i think patience it's it's something we have to learn how to live with for a while and i don't think a scientist can teach you patience that's something you have to try and do every day a little bit a little bit at a time yeah so i think patience the answer would be my cure to covid as apollo would say be patient and uh, the world will return to normal trust the gods <laughs> so next question is from uh, vijay durga Uh, she wants you to compose uh, one song. Well, one song oh. composed by you. Basically, she is asking one song which you have composed. Right. Really uh, I'll tell you the first song I composed. Uh, my theatre. Should I just call you MD? All right, MD. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you the first song I ever wrote. Um, I was sleeping one day and I woke up in tears. I don't know why. I literally woke up in tears and I had. this thing to write and the first song i ever wrote and i kid you not is my beautiful indian lady that's the first song i wrote um so i think that was about 2 years back and the first things that came into my brain were the number of moms that were in the world mm-hmm. you know and uh, and i think there's something to an indian lady i don't know what it is you can go to a party around the world but you see this beautiful indian lady in a sari you know just standing there with a little cocktail glass in her hand and you're like oh you know you got to want to know her you know that sort of way so i wrote a song called my beautiful indian lady which i still have to release but it's on the pipeline so one of my uh, 
you know, quick things that I really need to get to. Find a bunch of other musicians who help me transform that song into something beautiful. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Yeah. So the next one is from uh, Amy. Can our collaboration be included in your short term goals? Absolutely. 110%. In fact, it's less about me and more about you. You know, uh, I look at myself like this. I remember when you asked me to give an intro, right? To write a small intro for you, Ravi. I specifically said, what am I? And I said, I'm water. Right. Yeah. That's it. You are all the ingredients. I'm here to feed your thirst. I'm here to make your dish better. I'm here to serve you, not the other way around. So I'm very open to people who want to collaborate. And I think that's one of the things you'd find if you spoke to anybody who has worked with me. Uh, I'm very open to collaboration. I am like, you mix your ingredients in me and I will try and get out the best thing you want from me. So 100%. I'd love to collaborate with you, Ravi, first. I think what a lovely platform, man. There's so much yeah. more to do, you know? So, yeah, yeah, more than this platform. So if you have any roles uh, like, uh, you know, a hero's dad uh, <laughs> with limited dialogues. The only dialogue I should have is like, Haan, beta, bahar jane ki hai. Daba, baba, mat Ghar pe leke aao, ko. Daru yehi mile ji. Aray, <laughs> aray, aray. So do you have kids around me? Yeah, yeah. I, I have two sons. So that's the reason. Oh, I'm going to be driving and all that. So I will also be part of it. So I will also party along with you guys. I, I think that, that's all the dialogue I need. So next short film, any any dad's role uh, where this beard and this hairstyle suits, uh, you know, come to me. So. Absolutely. Locked in, locked in. I will uh, I will keep that in mind. I, like, I write a lot of family-oriented stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's it's important, you know, nowadays especially because I think uh, we are in touch with this larger family which we have mm -hmm. given Facebook, given, you know, Twitter, whatever it is, whatever online medium, you're connected to these thousands of people, right, who are your imaginary family. That somewhere I think we lost touch with our immediate families. Um, right. You know, we've started growing independently a lot that uh, I wanted to write something that's a lot more family oriented, talking about real things that happen, you know, yeah. not just your on the face things, you know, because we still as an Indian community, especially, we don't talk a lot about uh, sex, drugs, rape, uh, individual growth, who we are as people, how to find those sources. You know, there's still a lot of things we don't talk about being taboo, you know, um, like uh, depression, anxiety, you know, stuff like that, which I think we really ought to talk about now in a family setting, because then you're not alone. It's easy to talk about it alone, but to get different people on the same page, yeah, that's tough. Yeah. So for sure, yeah, yeah as the father. <laughs> <laughs> like the father son conversations, you know, yeah. when a girl breaks your heart, what do you do? With the code word, you know, you know, so you know, understand the code words. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, and I think it's we start opening that dialogue with our parents, with our family members or cousins or whoever it is, you know, because uh, we, this is what I keep saying as a singer songwriter or somebody who writes, we all are blessed with a divine talent, even before we give in our name, right? If you believe in God or spirit, spirituality, the moment you're born, you are given something different. You are given something unique, specific to you. Now, I don't think that's a, that's a blessing. I think that is a responsibility we have towards the world and towards the generation to come. We as people have to use that divinity as a vessel to help the world, to make it a better place, you know? And if we're not doing that a little bit day by day, that's when we start feeling uncomfortable, that we're not doing enough. 
we we are not finding the right things in our lives we are always looking for something because we haven't found the purpose to fulfill you know and we have to start looking at all these things that they're bigger than us we're just this much just this much uh, you know which brings me to the point as to when i told you an attribute of myself everybody wants to be a number right what are you worth how much are you kamaoing kitna kya वैसे आई लाइक टू लुक एट माई सेल्फ एज द डेसिमल पॉइंट यू कैन बी वन विथ मल्टीपल जीरो राइट बट द डेसिमल पॉइंट डिसाइड द वैल्यू ऑफ दोज जीरो लाइक टू थिंक ऑफ माई सेल्फ एज दैट डेसिमल पॉइंट यू नो वे डू यू नीड टू पुट इट वेर आर यू सैटिस्फाइड मैन यू नो इफ यू वन थाउजेंड रुपीज टूडे यू वॉन्ट टू वन टू थाउजेंड टू मोरू 2000 5000 5000 10000 and then before you know it you have more than you need and that becomes another headache mm-hmm. so yes yeah sorry i think i drifted away a little yeah you you also a good motivational speaker so you know we should you know take you around to some colleges to inspire people so i i would love that i didn't want to mention that on uh, the things i do because i think as an artist that is the first thing an artist should do an yeah. artist is not there to prove whether they are good or wrong they are there to inspire you to do what you are meant to do yeah that you look at you know, what you are speaking is more uh, from what you have experienced what you have realized uh, you know none right. of these sound like picked up from books uh, so i think this this is these is the right talk which people need uh, you know especially the uh, kids at the college we also have noble who's you know who's giving you compliments about you know he's really proud of you and uh, looks like noble just reactivated his facebook account and as soon as he <laughs> he, he got glued to this particular live show thanks thanks noble for this compliment yeah uh, thanks thanks luki good to see you on man you in fact asked me you know a friend i'd like to hang out with you know who's really down to earth and who i love he was my roommate in college noble look uh, he's another guy yeah put me on the stranded island i think we'd have a ball of a time man he and i yeah. <laughs> i think he and i could do a show together you know we should really do a travel show or a music show together he's a wonderful bassist an rj an actor as well you know who's mm-hmm. traveled the world so hey luki proud of you too man catch you up hey connecting uh, luke so good thanks for the compliments for uh, rohit and last question um, rohit before we get into the one minute cm question yeah. so yeah since since you are into acting and uh, you know you, you've been uh, through this particular journey for almost a decade now uh, what what are the changes i mean do you think that uh, the board of certification uh, is good enough or you know do you recommend any changes uh, with respect to screening or uh, giving the ratings for the movies and uh, series that are coming across i think uh, speaking from an indian perspective mm-hmm. we are growing if you look at the number of the types of series that have come out like sacred games or patal lok or inside edge etc right it's become a lot more bold mm-hmm. a lot more real so i think indian filmmakers uh, are getting the chance to progress a lot the certifications have eased down as well which is really wonderful Uh, so i don't think i'd like to change that as yet because i think that's an ongoing process that will evolve and it takes a lot of steps to do that what i, I would like to uh, impose upon is people who are full time artists man mm. uh, and i'm talking about budding filmmakers directors producers you have to pay your actors you have to pay your writers you can't expect them to deliver great work for free even though you're giving them a medium to do it right i have done so many projects where tell me you want to make a film but you don't have 10000 rupees to pay an actor mm. right for a full time artist because their whole thing is based on that they go home they work for you they want to put their best foot forward for you and you're telling them that i can't pay your basic yeah so then what happens is you are losing out on this incredible pool of talent who want to do something but who can't right and it's very important because we are missing out on a lot of beautiful talented people only because 
we are being miserly about the 10000 rupees to pay and it's not a big amount right to pay an actor but no you do it for free because we are giving you this platform are but i'm giving you my talent as well na no? right so i that's where i feel actors sometimes not just actors a lot of artists aren't given their due credit man you know when your maid comes you'll pay your maid na otherwise you know if your maid doesn't come you're screwed agar artist ka kya hai if you don't get one you'll get another that's mm-hmm. the mentality so i actually came up with something i really wanted to speak to like minded people about called an independent artist association where if you are a full time artist you can be doing whatever project but if you're part of that association you should at least get 3000 rupees minimum for the work you're doing even if you're just doing one show right so then takes a lot of preparation it's just not of many hours the shoot might be for just one hour but you know getting prepared for that okay. character getting into that character you know like thinking about that for almost like 24 hours and then you know it it takes more hours than what you are actually shooting for so, absolutely yeah right from the center which is why i think uh, yeah my whole thing is i think uh, amy mentioned it in your interview hmm. giving art a little more importance putting aside on a state level a budget saying we need these many shows of various types not just telugu True. or not just english not just hindi you know uh, sort of that way. yeah and yeah So Rohit, coming to the final question. So one minute CM. So if you become the CM, uh, what what are the areas you would focus on? So you've got a minute to answer. So uh, a lot of people get confused that you know you you become a CM only for one minute. Uh, yeah, the question is, you've got one minute to talk about what would you do if you become a CM, Chief Minister? Right. Uh, that's a that's a lovely question, and I have a minute. Uh, my first thought was I'd resign. <laughs> okay yaar kar yaar you know because i think uh, uh, understanding the logics of it is one thing understanding the money that takes to run a state is one thing but i think politics and being a cm is all about managing people right. so the first thing i would do as cm is understand who's all part of the system who's all part of this government that is running the state right okay. and the second question i'd ask is where is all the money going mm-hmm. because for so long if the money is coming in why aren't roads being built better why are the poor getting poorer why are they not also able to get things that they require right kuch na kuch gapla hai wo gapla kya hai because if you see they are still managing the city very well huh? uh, mm-hmm. before we used to have massive park outs which have decreased right which is great a street seem to be better but how do we get rid of this red tapeism this under the table dealing you know how do we bring in more integrity honesty uh, as well that's another thing i would try and touch because uh, i think doing these things in logic is very easy to say as a cm but if somebody comes to you with a gun to your head and says you know like how all these series portray i'm going to fill, kill your family but let this truck pass of full of drugs what are you going to do yeah that has to stop how right how it because it does come to that you know along with power comes a whole lot of good and bad that you have to deal with right now are you the type of person who can play the game who can be that headstrong to take these tough decisions oof i was thinking about that and i think that's what i felt yaar me i'll resign you make me cultural minister <laughs> you know i think or tourism minister I'll, i'll sort of work better in that area you know yeah, that's a good option you know that's a good option you know, we we don't think of all the other departments which are existing uh, right because the power man uh, that's, a, that's a unique uh, response we've got till date so uh, yeah i hope so because you need to be really in tune and i know some of my friends who are politicians mm-hmm. you know and i've seen the amount of work they do and i think the one thing that really gets me is this clash of ideals right there's always a party involved and i'm not a party person like i said i'm water i i will feed those who are thirsty irrespective of whether you belong to congress or bjp or aam aadmi or you know you belong to trump you belong to anybody here pani pani hota hai dharti dharti hota hai sky sky hota hai you know uh, 
so I think as a CM, I would not be the best person to employ. But as a minister, you know, yeah, I think I'd be able to make more of a difference there, where it's more towards one particular thing area, which I can focus on. Yeah, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Super responses, Rohit. Uh, time me pata nahi chala. We've almost crossed 55 minutes, and uh, but thanks, thanks, friends, for those uh, questions, uh, which added up to the rapid fire questions. I still had a lot of questions, but you know. Good response, Rohit, and uh, thanks for taking time out. I think this this was really interesting and insightful uh, discussion which we had had. Thanks for inviting me over, and and thank you for everybody to taking out the time to log in and uh, you know seeing my big ears and small face. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, truly, uh, I know it's hard to take out time from your schedules and to support us, but thank you for your support. You know, without you guys we wouldn't want to do what we do because in the end that's what an artist is we live for you we are here for you you know so join us uh, help us let's collaborate more let's work together more and uh, let's have fun you know yeah let's have fun let's talk about serious stuff as well yeah. Sure. so yeah ravi lovely and yeah. an amazing Thank you, Rohit. Thank you, friend. So we have a new friend here. Uh, so all the best, Rohit, for whatever you're doing, uh, acting, your passion. We're waiting for the song which you plan to release. Let us know. We'll spread the word out. Uh, so I, I think that's the best thing which we can do uh, to encourage artists. Spread the word out. If it's uh, you know there are a lot of uh, you know latest movie songs which will get released. Everybody will play for it, but. If you can spread out uh, for the upcoming artists, I think that that's the bit you can do to encourage them. So we're waiting for it. Uh, Rohit, let us know. We will do a bit to uh, spread the word out. Uh, enjoy your biking, enjoy your passion, and uh, do well. You too, yeah. Can I say one last thing though, Ravi, before yeah, we yeah. Yeah. Uh, So anybody who wants to get in touch with me, feel free. Just DM me, message me. You know, message me if you have an idea. Message me if you have, you want to write, you want to sing, you want to perform. You know, uh, I think the one thing that COVID's done really well for us is given us the time to introspect a little more. Take that time. And if you feel you've lost out in an art, message mm -hmm. me. I guarantee you, I will add something of value to you. You know, so uh, allow this platform to get in touch and get out of your comfort zones and uh, reach out. You know, I look forward to listening to what you have to say and working. Right? Yeah. Thank you, Rohit. So I'll mention uh, the Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms Rohit is here. So please do follow him and, you know, get in touch if you have any ideas. Absolutely. Thanks, Ravi, a lot. Lots of love. I hope you, you and your are safe. Take care and uh, yeah, be patient. It'll all happen. <laughs> Thank, thanks, Rohit. All right, Ravi. Thank you.